Stamping friends, I am so excited tonight to share you this sidestep card that I made along with the products used to make it, which are the product, uh, most wonderful time product medley that's in the holiday catalog at Stampin' Up. You are going to love this medley. It is one of my favorites and I couldn't hardly stop stamping with it. So I'm going to be showing you this sidestep card. I'm only going to show you the directions of how to do the, the basics of it um, and not stamp the whole card. And then I'm going to show you some other great um, cards that I made using this medley. Um, originally, it can kind of look like a big investment, which it is a big investment, but it is a great investment. This product medley comes with the stamp set and the dies here. And you know, if you were to purchase this at a bundle, you'd probably be looking at a minimum of $55. And for $15 more, you get all of this other product. And so it comes with the six by six um, background papers. So I'm gonna just move the catalog here and we can focus on the papers a little more. The papers are, you get 48 sheets of this paper and it's um, six by six, double-sided. The one side is foil, so I'm hoping you can kind of see that as I move it around. And then, of course, the other sides are, are plain, but not plain. But, you know, either way, I'm going to be showing you some fun cards made with both sides of the paper. So besides the 48 sheets, so you can get at least, you know, 48 cards just out of partially using those. You get 12 of these foil backed or foil cards fronts and there's 12 of these. So you get four of this Bethlehem star, four of the striped and four of the star background. Besides that, you get these self adhesive die cut stickers. These are a, you know, like a cardstock way. They're self adhesive. You'll get two of this sheet two of the berries and star sheet. They're so thick, I think I have two of them here, but I don't. You get two of the deer and one of the trees along with the deer. So you get seven of these all together. Wait, wait, that's not all. You get this fun foil um, gold <clears throat> trim, which is like a tinsel for a tree. And you get uh, 58 self-adhesive gold stars. Glad to see there's people out there watching. It's always fun not to be, you know, talking to myself. And hopefully you're able to um, hear me and see me. So I'm going to just take a look here and see um, who's all watching and if you're able to hear me. So as hopefully you can hear me. So I'm going to keep going. Anyway, um, we're going to start with showing you uh, the, the sidestep card. First I want to mention this is going to be, it's not available yet, um, but it will be available in the near future. This is um, the new paper trimmer that Stampin' Up! has come out with. And I'm not exactly sure of the release date for customers, but I, I am going to use it tonight, so I thought I'd better mention it a bit. It has this extended arm. It's a little wider than the old trimmer that we sold, which makes it really, really nice. It has an arm that goes all the way out to 17 inches. And then when you fold that arm up and you put your paper in, this is exactly six inches. So if you're doing any six by six type of thing, that marks the six inches, which is a great feature. So for our card tonight, we're gonna put this in the, in the uh, we call it the portrait position, which is this position. This is landscape. When I first started stamping, that was always a little difficult for me to figure out. So portrait, landscape. We're going to put it in our paper trimmer in the portrait position and I'm going to put it at two and an eighth. No, excuse me, this is two and a half. 
and I'm going to, this is my cutter here, I'm going to move this down to the two and an eighth inch spot. And I'm going to cut from the two and an eighth all the way down to um, seven and five eighths. So I'm going to go down here, seven and five eighths would be the one little line past the half. So that we're putting a slit into our paper. Now we're going to turn it counterclockwise. So we're going to go this direction. And we're going to come up here with our scoring tool. And we're going to make the first score mark. And we're just going to score up to that, um, that slit. We're not going to score beyond that at the two and an eighth. When we go to the four and a half, no, nope, excuse me, four and a quarter, sorry about that, we're going to score all the way across. Then we're going to go to four and a half, and we're only going to score it from the one end to the slit mark again. And this makes a really nice deep slit mark. Now I got to open up my arm because I need to go out to seven and five eighths, which again is that one little line. Well, maybe it's the two little lines past the. And we're going to just slit, go to that score mark. So now we've got those scored and I will be putting the directions um, on the on the group page so you have the directions so you don't have to worry about writing down all these numbers. So then we're going to make our accordion fold. We're going to fold this and I highly recommend using a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, it's a really good investment. They're very inexpensive. We're going to and we're going to fold this one like this. And we're going to fold that one like that. Now there's where we have the other one so we're going to go like that and then we're going to come back and just score there so we've got our okay I must have forgot a score mark oh no wait wrong way no here we go okay this is what happens when you get me live six and three quarters there we go that is the one we're missing Okay, let's try this again. Like I said, I'll be posting the directions on, there we go, two and an eighth, four and a quarter, five and a half, six and three quarters, and seven and five eighths, and then you're going to make your accordion. And that's the base of your accordion card. Now for my card here, I embellished it with those trees, that page of trees and two of the deer, and you know, these are self-adhesive, so we want to take away that sticky. Otherwise, when we fold the card, they would all stick together. So I'm going to show you how we would do that. When you, this is a little embossing buddy that you can buy through Stampin' Up. And I'm just going to take one of these deer, because I did that with the trees and the deer. And you take your embossing buddy, and I just take that deer, and I keep going up and down. And what that powder does is it puts a fine powder so there's no more sticky. And then I use dimensionals to pop these up. And so that is how, um, you know, you get without having it all sticky. And that is a good little tip if you do a lot of scrapbooking. When I use these die cuts for scrapbooking, I, I like dimensions. So I like popping things up like the tree with dimensionals. This little frame is from... The holiday catalog and didn't I just have the holiday catalog there it is on page 53 you'll see the ornate frame dies this is a absolute awesome die set um, what I'm finding with the Stampin' Up! new dies is that they come, they pop right out of the die so easily and there's not a lot of chads to poke out. And this frame set, you don't need to buy the Monster Bash. You know, it's part of the Monster Bash suite, but if you're not into Halloween, 
this die set will work with, I used it here for the stamp set for Christmas cards. So it's very, very versatile. You might want to add that to your wish list. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here. Um, and so we can see these cards a little better close up while I'm describing them. And so um, I made over 25 cards this weekend using that most wonderful time uh, stamp set or product bundles. You can see here, maybe not see, depending on your lighting. Um, I did the red background with the subtle embossing folder. Just put a couple strips. This is a great way to use up some of those little tiny pieces of your designer paper. The circle from the stitch shape dies. And here's the tree from that wonderful time, most wonderful time stamp set. And this label comes in it and so does this greeting. And I stamped that in black. Added some of our little red rhinestones, base, rhinestones that are in the annual catalog. And this is one of the dies I cut out some gold glimmer paper. I colored this, stamped the tree in old olive and colored it with the light um, old olive blender pen, which is a nice look, but for some of the other colors, I really liked the look of that stamp set or that stamp tree that, you know, I used on this one here where they're kind of high, low colors. And so I'm going to show you how I did that to achieve a little different look. I'm going to take the stamp and I'm going to stamp my tree. And I'm going to take the little tree. Now we're going to just pretend this is a piece of scratch paper over there, not part of my card. And I'm off stamping. This is called off stamping, where you take a little bit of the ink off, so you stamp it first. And then I just stamped it over the tree. And you don't have to be real fussy about that. But to me, it gave the tree a look of branches, and I really like that look. So that's just a little tip. You can see in the next card that I use that technique um, on this card here. And uh, I use the little candy cane foil paper, put a little of the tinsel on the tree, cut this out with some gold foil, and again use the subtle background. I hope you can see that subtle background on there embossed. This is one of the sketches from my card sketch, Sunday sketches. So if you haven't ever um, actually saw, you know, I've seen those on my blog, there's over 52 sketches to card sketches to get you started. And here we have um, a non-traditional Christmas color. This is some of the new in colors, the purple posy, and since you know, we had a little uh, quality issue with the Purple Posy ink, and so I use the Highland Heather to coordinate with that. It blends very nicely in some pretty in pink, or pretty peacock paper, and just added a few rhinestones to this card. Now the next card I made, I used um, some stra strips again of cardstock or designer paper. Again, using up some of those little strips you have left over that you can't, you know, part with or can't absolutely throw them away because you never know when you might need them. And uh, the bow for the package is gold embossed. And I embossed the words on this tag. And again, I use that embossing buddy to take the sticky off as I showed you earlier in the, the live. This card here, um, again, is one of the Sunday sketches. Um, so it has three circle elements to it and used all these products except the red cardstock, the ribbon, and that are part of that product medley. For the next card, I use the foil package paper. I'm going to see if I can move that a little bit so you can see that the foil, some of the packages are done in foil. Here I stamped the packages in a smoky gray. I had seen that online, another demonstrator had done, and I really kind of liked the, the contrast of that smoky gray. Added the little star and again some of those rhinestones. 
The next card I used the larger oval from the stitch shapes and stamp deck the halls and again this time I use the smoky again and the ribbons are real red. Now here are the deer. This one I used, I just stuck it down without taking the sticky off. This one I took the sticky off so that I could raise it up, adding just some tinsel to the background and a few of the stars. I stamped the original tree, um, you know, with uh, complete ink. And then without re-inking the, the stamp, I stamped the other trees to give it a little more dimension. This card uses one of those foil backing um, card fronts that I showed you earlier in the, the live. Again, adding just a deer and a little sentiment. This label again is part of that die set of the most wonderful time. This card here um, is, I use the tr birch trees for the background in Boston emboss this tree in gold. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I just tore some cardstock to give it a look like some snow drifts. Unfortunately, it sounds like we might be having some snow drifts here in Minnesota by the end of the week um, in western Minnesota. And adding some lemon, uh, linen trim to the top of that just to pull it all together. This is a great card. You could do a birthday card, a winter birthday card for men. Doesn't have to only be Christmas. Here's another one. If you have any of the men in your life who love deer hunting or just love wildlife, um, this is a very clean and simple card. Simply stamped the trees and again off stamping them and a simple sentiment in the deer and it's, it just makes a nice elegant but simple card. This one here, um, again, is using the stitch shapes with these, uh, this paper is just so pretty. And then adding the small tree and the big tree. And again, cutting out that star with the foil paper and this is embossed in gold. This card here is um, some of the foil paper background and hopefully you can see those berries are a copper foil or gold foil. Um, this is embossed in gold embossing and a little bit of a scallop trim on the back and just adding a little tinsel for some pop of wow there. This paper is so luscious. Um, here I added some gold foil just to really make it exciting and royal looking. The next couple of cards I used the berries from those uh, sticker die cuts. This is the hexagon um, stitch dies which are nested, the nested dies, excuse me, not hexagon, nested dies. Love, love, love those dies. It's just a fun front for your card. Of course, you all know me. I love everything. This is um, the brick embossing. It's hard to see the great detail of this brick. If you look at it uh, in real life, it actually does tend to look like an actual brick wall. This adding a strip of paper. This again is one of my card sketches. And here I just cut out, I uh, used the brick background, cut some circles and made some little ornaments. And this little tag here label is from the ornate label dies again. Now here's a non-traditional colored card. This has the in color um, sequence in it. Little pretty peacock tree and the terracotta trim and words. Um, and this frame is the heirloom frames, comes with square or oval. You cut the frame out first and then you emboss it. They're, they're sold together as a set and it's a really fun, easy way to make a fun shaker card. 
Now, maybe you don't want to putz with the shaker card. So this one here is just simply framed the Christmas tree. I embossed the Christmas tree on the, excuse me, the star green and star designer paper, stamped up my ornaments and just made a fun little framed card. And this one here is just a cute little tag to put on a gift um, with a little basic twine linen thread in the middle and a little believe tag. So this is all part of the Most Wonderful Time product medley. I highly recommend you making that investment um, in that product medley. medley excuse me. Um, like I said, you'll be able to get tons and tons of cards out of this medley of products. I'm, I think I will be able to get at least 100. I know I made 25 and I have so much paper left over. It's going to be a really great way to send out some Christmas cards to those special people in my life. And I know a lot of people are sending, um, you know, picture cards, which is a really great thing too. Um, but it's always nice to, you know, hand stamp a card and show people how much you care. Thanks for joining me for this Facebook Live tonight. I hope you enjoyed seeing the stepped card and I will be putting these cards on the, the group page. And also I will be putting the directions so you can can make one up yourself. Happy stamping!